Xenoblade Chronicles is massive. It's overwhelming at times, especially on your first playthrough. From battles to questing to affinity, gems, hell, even inventory management, this game is huge. And this video serves to go over some general tips to be able to help you out. Things that I definitely wish that I would have known on my first playthrough. Now, I want to make something very clear here, that this is not going to go over any combat tips. I'll actually have a separate video for combat tips for those that are interested in it, and I'll go ahead and place that in a pinned comment in the comment section below. So in this video, today I'll be talking about general tips, things that are going to be good to know throughout your playthrough, especially as a beginner. Starting off with some of the basics here, one thing that I want to emphasize is the tutorial section in Xenoblade Chronicles. The tutorials here are actually pretty good in case you want to figure out how specific characters should be used in battle or you just want to review something that you may have questions about, such as like the skills for instance. I know that I was going back to that a couple of times just to make sure I knew how to actually use them. So as a first note, be checking out those tutorials and make sure you really understand them because they're pretty well done in Xenoblade Chronicles. Let's talk a little bit more about quests and exploring because there's a ton to talk about here. First and foremost, you have the named NPCs. You're going to want to talk to every single named NPC. And what I mean by that is, if someone goes by the name of Nira Nira, for instance, compared to something like Colony 9 Resident, well, that's a named NPC. You're going to want to talk to them specifically because doing so is going to register them onto the affinity chart. Keep in mind that you only need to do this once, and after you've spoken to an NPC, a named NPC, once for the first time, you'll come up with a little notification that you've done so and that they're registered onto the affinity chart. Throughout the game, there are going to be quests that will have prerequisites in order to actually start them. And most of the time, the most annoying prerequisite to actually complete is registering that NPC on the affinity chart. For instance, there's a quest called Education Minded Susanna. And for the quest to actually pop up, You'll see that if I go to Susanna here, there's no quest available. Instead, what I need to do is I actually need to register Moritz first. After I've gone and talked to Moritz and now he's on the affinity chart, now I can talk to Susanna to obtain the quest. The point of the matter is that when you see a named NPC, be sure to talk to them and register them on the affinity chart. On a final note, keep in mind that there are different NPCs that come out at different times of the day. Searching around at 10 a.m., for instance, is going to yield different named NPCs compared to searching around at 2000 at night. You'll want to be familiar with using the clock and change the time from 10 a.m. to 2000 in the same specific area. I would suggest going ahead and sweeping through an area at 2000, getting all the named NPCs that you can, and then switching the clock to 10 a.m. while in the same area, and then talking to all the named NPCs that you can find at 10 a.m. as well. As you travel along throughout your journey, you're going to be collecting various quests through these clients and NPCs. You're going to want to obtain as many quests as you can before you actually go ahead and start completing them. What you don't want to do is obtain a quest from an NPC and then right after you obtain it, you go out into the world and complete the quest. You do not want to be doing this. Quests in Xenoblade ask you to do things like defeat certain enemies, they ask you to collect various item orbs and random materials that enemies drop, and the best way to go about this is, well, typically I should say, is that you collect as many quests as you can from NPCs and then going out in the world, killing the monsters, getting the item orbs and the random materials. 
The point of the matter is that you wanna get into a habit of collecting the quests from clients before you start going out into the world and completing them right away. By doing this, you'll actually go ahead and start killing monsters and collecting item orbs and opening treasure chests. And in doing so, you'll start wiping out quests one by one by one and not even realize that you're doing it. You'll all of a sudden just grab an item orb and say, oh, wow, I needed this to go ahead and complete that quest, great. So again, collect the quests before you just go out and do them rather than just saying, okay, well, I need to go kill this monster. And so I'm gonna go out and do that right now and go kill him. Don't be doing that, typically at least. Another piece of information here that you'll wanna know with quests is that there are a ton of quests in Xenoblade. There's, there's nearly 500 of them. So do not feel compelled to complete every single quest right when they become available to you. Doing so is gonna burn you out. It's gonna make the game feel exhausting and daunting. So my piece of advice to you would be just complete quests when you want to. If you're feeling burned out by doing them, take a break, go ahead and just move forward with the story instead. Because in my opinion, in Xenoblade, the quests are the brunt of this game. So again, do quests when you want. Don't get burned out by doing a ton over and over and over. Enjoy the game, play the story, and do quests when you want to on your time. As you explore the various areas in Xenoblade, there's gonna be a ton of landmarks and locations that you're going to run into. There's a difference though between the two. Landmarks you can travel to, you can quick travel to. You'll just go ahead and press the Y button to bring up the map menu, and then you can go ahead and skip travel to any previous landmark that you've already been to. You can go ahead and skip travel to any of the landmarks that you've been to previously. Locations, on the other hand, are designated areas that you've been to previously, but you won't be able to quick travel to them. They do come in handy though, because they section off various points in the map that you're in. As you explore in Xenoblade, you're gonna run into these blue item orbs, which are going to be really handy because some of these items can go into your Collectopedia. You can think of the Collectopedia as a type of scavenger hunt where these item orbs that you pick up, well, they can go into the Collectopedia and as you fill them out, you'll be rewarded with equipment and gems. So try to be filling them out as best as you can. There's an affinity system in Xenoblade Chronicles, and I'll section this off into two parts. There's character affinity and area affinity. So let's talk about character affinity first off. Each one of your party members have an affinity towards each other, which you'll want to increase throughout your playthrough. You'll be able to do this through heart-to-heart -heart events during battles while you encourage them or possibly even heal their status effects. You can also earn character affinity by accepting and completing quests, for instance. You can even gift give to be able to boost your character affinity. And the reason why you wanna be doing this is because it gives a few bonuses like longer chain attacks, additional skill link slots, and better gem crafting capabilities. All things that are a little bit more in depth for this guide, but again, you just wanna keep in mind, the better the affinity that you have with every other character, it's, the, it's gonna be good for your playthrough. Area affinity, on the other hand, is raised by completing quests and talking to the named NPCs that we went over earlier. You see, many quests also have area affinity prerequisites. Now, you don't really have to worry about this too much. Just keep in mind that as you register new NPCs and you complete quests, that you're naturally going to build the area affinity, which will give you the ability to complete different and more quests. On a final note, building area affinity will give you access to different trade items with NPCs. So for instance, if you only had one star of an affinity in Colony 9, you're not gonna be able to trade for as many items compared to if you had three star affinity with that same NPC in Colony 9. 
Now, when thinking about inventory management and selling and buying things, like what should I sell and what should I buy? Let's talk about selling things first. You're gonna be getting tons of different weapons and armors throughout your journey, specifically because there are so many drops from enemies. You're just going to be getting a ton of outdated gear at times. So if it's outdated, feel free to sell it. Whatever you don't actually want to use, sell those equipments. However, save the collectibles as you obtain them. Eventually, there's going to be little exclamation marks around some of your collectibles. Those ones you're going to want to save because those ones have to deal with a quest. So you don't want to be selling those off because they can go ahead to move forward with completing a quest. Now, buying things on the other hand, it's a little bit more simple. Most of the gear that you're going to find in shops, now most, not all, is just simply not going to be worth it. There are exceptions, but more often than not, you're going to find better weapons and armor by the enemy drops that you're going to get. So that said, you're going to want to prioritize in buying art books instead, not so much the gear. And what the art books will do is that they're going to help you in leveling your arts. In the beginning, arts cannot be leveled past level four unless you purchase an art book and teach that character the specific art. Now you'll be able to level that art up to level seven if you'd like. To put it simply, check out the gear with a heavy amount of skepticism because it's not going to help you very much. You pretty much know that you're not going to be buying any of it. Then, go for the art books instead. You're going to want to put much higher priority in buying these rather than the gear that the merchants sell. We'll finish this guide by talking about creating gems and slotted weapons and gear. Some of the gear that you'll come across will have a U on it, and this stands for unique. And what that means is that it has a unique gem in it. Now, don't let that confuse you. The gem itself is not unique. It's not very special, not, not in most cases at least, but it just simply means that this piece of gear, you can't take this gem off of the gear. That's all that the unique means. The S, however, on the slotted gear means exactly that, that they have a slot that you can put these gems into. Now, just for your reference, a piece of equipment that has zero slots, no slots at all, but slightly more defense is rarely, it's rarely ever as good as a piece of equipment that has a slot, but less defense. So you're going to want to prioritize in having slots in your gear so that you can place gems in them rather than going for a piece of equipment that has more defense, but zero slots at all. Crafting gems is going to be a whole different video that I'll go ahead and place in that same comment that I'm going to have pinned. But you want to look at these very much kind of like Materia in Final Fantasy VII if you've ever played that game. You'll find gems through quests that you've completed, possibly even enemy drops. You can even craft your own gems through various crystals that you'll pick up and these gems are going to boost stats and give various abilities to you while in battle. You're gonna to wanna to take advantage of this, but don't make it a massive priority. The gems help, however, in early game, they're not extremely necessary. Later on in the game though, if you wanna take on the super bosses and whatnot, they're gonna be a lot more necessary, but this being a beginner's guide, I'm just gonna keep it at that. Keep gem crafting in mind, but don't get too overwhelmed by it. And that's going to do it for my Xenoblade Chronicles Beginner's Tips video. I'm hoping that some of these tips were fairly valuable for, especially for newer players that are going into this game and they've never played it at all. The game can be really overwhelming and again, these were tips that I really would have appreciated knowing during my first playthrough. I'm hoping it helps. 
I'll be placing more links of the other guides that I've created here for Xenoblade Chronicles within the comment that's pinned here on this video. So if this helped you out, maybe those videos will help you out too. A like and a comment is always appreciated. If there are tips that you think other beginners should know and you're more of a seasoned vet, please, by all means, let other people know in the comment section. Sorry, I kept you waiting.